Hello, good evening and welcome to the Little Farmer's Farm with me Guru Mafinda and welcome to the big Saturday night show. Now you may have seen the uh, earlier video that we did with Magical McDarbyshire where he was showing us how he uh, grew his carrots nice and straight. Good little episode that one. Good grower Mick. Check him out at Old McDarby's Farm. <coughs> but tonight, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be looking at urea, urine. Nature's Bounty, a natural fertiliser. Bradley's just on his bike outside there. Check it out. Also, much, much more. We're going to be planting on the uh, some of the brassicas. We're going to be getting the... Um, um, what else are we doing? We're going to get, get some courgettes in the ground. All sorts. So enjoy yourselves. Chill out for half an hour. All right. Keep growing with your heads down. I'll catch you in a bit, boys and girls. Let's get back up to the plots. Hello! Well, as you can probably hear, there's not going to be much outdoors work going on today. It's absolutely peeing down. And talking about pee, both types of pee, uh, we're going to be planting some peas, and we're also going to be, because of the mice issue, the mouse issue, uh, we're going to try and deter the mice by uh, using we urine, male urine to be precise, as a, a boundary deterrent around our pea bed. Now you might think you're dirty bugger, but it's urea as well that you get from urine. Um, as well as, you know, if, if you use the male wee, um, it has uh, testosterone in it and it deters um, mice. It's like scent marking really, but anyway, I'm digressing. We're going to get the peas in to the polytunnel on the, uh, the PTP that we created the other night. So we're going to get them into the soil around there. That's the PTP. That's the soil we're going to be planting them in. in uh, we're using the onward peas. These ones. And we're going to be planting them in around the base of the TP. Now, as the pea grows, hopefully, we're going to be stringing that as well, so it's got a, a climbing frame to climb up. Now the onward peas will grow to about, potentially about six feet high, but we're going to, again, let them grow on as, as, as far as we can with the canes. That's about four feet high. Nip them out and then let them bush. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to be putting approximately 30 peas in, in and around those canes, and then the string around that for them to climb up later on. But because we're directly uh, sowing them into that bed, we don't want them easily mice to come and dig them out and eat them. So what I've already done, it's already had a good water in that bed with standard water H2, <coughs> H2O. Um, but around the perimeter, I, uh, I feel a little bit embarrassed about telling you this, but uh, trust me, it's a tried and, trust, uh, tried and trusted method. Um, that's the receptacle <laughs> that, uh, that I pee in and then I put it all around the border so basically yeah just drizzle it all around the border and so that the, set, the, the scent of the, um, of the urine will hopefully uh, deter the mice from coming in here and, 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 and digging around certainly it'll th literally throw them off the scent is the hope for the peas that are going to be planted in there okay I'm digressing a little bit now and I'm getting a bit a uh, bit, bit blathery aren't I but uh, yeah we're going to put the peas in there that's already been done I didn't want to show you that because uh, I'm a good Christian boy like but uh, that's what we're doing and then every time um, 
that we do the watering up, I'll be putting the uh, the sprinkling around the perimeter of the bed. The pigeons are going to be excluded from this area because they can't get in. And as I say, we're going to be doing the netting later over the vents. So the pigeons are not going to be the problem. The mice hopefully will be deterred by the urine. And, uh, and Bob's your uncle. But yeah, urine, that, that's where you get urea, urea from. You've heard of sulfate of urea and things like that. Um, it's, it comes from urine, it's like dried urine if you like, urea. Um, you usually get it from cows or cattle or whatever. And it's also an amendment for the soil. So urea, you, you, you get um, more vibrant leaf on the plants. Um, it helps with photosynthesis and, and producing chlorophyll and um, when the flowers do come on, when the blossoms because you get the peas from the blossoms it encourages that, that, that blossom and it assists with the blossom bloom if you like so it's not going to do any harm to the peas it's perfectly natural it's a natural deterrent we don't particularly like killing things so uh, as long as the mice are discouraged from uh, the locations where you don't want them, then that's that's all to the power of God, isn't it? Really, that's what I that's what I like to do. That's what we like to do. We have, we have the humane traps, like you saw in a previous episode, and you know you they just live in their lives, aren't, aren't they? The mice. So if you don't have to kill them, don't kill them. Right, let's get these peas in. Okay. So there's precisely 30 peas going in the ground and all you do when you're putting them in, it's dead simple. So you put them around where your, uh, you require them, and these are the planting stations, the sowing stations, just push them in. That's about an inch and three quarters, it's not a precise science, but between an inch and a half and two inches deep is uh, is the depth that you want to be sowing your seeds at your pea seeds they're just dried peas aren't they basically so that's how far they're going down so they're in there now i'm just going to cover them back up with this with the soil and then when you water them in that, uh, that completely surrounds them with the soil, so you've got full soil contact with the pea. Put plenty of water in at this stage because they are dried peas at the moment, aren't they? So you want them to be uh, woken up by the swelling from the water. We do them different ways. We, we'll, we'll sort of put them in... Um, in a bath overnight which we've done before and that uh, that wakes up the pea splits the pea rehydrates it and it uh, starts the process what I'm going to do then I'm going to cover them all over then I'm going to give them a, um, a, another 10 litre uh, can of, of, of the water and that's it that's all you do as I say the urea, the urea will leach in because it's only going to it's going to go around the sides but it will you will get some leaching in and i may well add some pee to a to a watering every now and again uh sort of like every fourth watering or something like that i'll i'll pee in the pot if you want well not if you want <laughs> but that's what i'll be doing right i'll go around and, and finish that off now okay guys there we go i had a second thought about that um that lid, it was a bit too narrow at the top, so I wanted it to be a little bit wider to give them a little bit more elbow room as they come through. There's Magical McDarby, should they? From all McDarby's farm. Oh, yeah, nice one. Peach Ellis. Yeah, that, well, I've swapped that. Uh, I was using the base of a bucket. But it was a bit too narrow at the top because I've got 30 peas in the ground there. 
and as them pea plants come up they'll, they'll need to spread their wings a little bit so I didn't want it too too tight at the top for them and of course there's not going to be any birds getting in here I've used the urea which is the pea we talked about before all around there Urea as well, good for photosynthesis of the plants and it helps the blossoms. So we want blossoms on the peas. The more blossoms you get, the more pea pods you get. So it should be... Uh, it should be... Yes. Yeah. Only thing I suppose you've got to watch with that is if it starts to smell, you don't want to be carrying on with that. But uh, if you're watering in at the same time as you're doing your, your boundary, then it shouldn't stink so much. It'll you soak in, won't it? Eh? Need a blind in there. <laughs> yeah, a, a privacy curtain you need in there. Yeah, they'll be well in there, mate. Should be all right, shouldn't it? Yeah. Like we said, uh, Joe and Terry did them last year, and they get there wasn't a mark on them peas. Did you see them? They, they did last yeah, year. Has it? Yeah, in the polytub. So yeah, we shouldn't be should, should be too bad. I'm gonna put. Um, some netting over the inside of that window that rising window so we can open that up and let it vent through Mick suggested yesterday on one of the comments that he made that we put another door on the outside just a hinged door that opens that way which yeah. which is not a bad idea I've just got I've just got to watch that if it's gonna hit that I'll have to raise that up a little bit on that side yeah, just let, let you let netting go further can you so it drags yeah, I was thinking when, when it opens up, it, it's probably going to miss that, but we'll see how we get on. We'll be right. Okay, so urine has been used traditionally, and is still being used, um, as a free organic fertiliser. There are many, many benefits for uh, for using urine in the garden. And not just in the garden, now it's used for all kinds of things. For tanning of leather and, and what have you. Obviously faeces, which is from the back end, if you didn't already know, is a different kettle of fish and I wouldn't recommend doing that. But, uh, I mean, some people do. But the urine is high in nitrogen it's got a moderate amount of uh, potassium um, and then phosphorus it's, well it's got a small amount actually of potassium I think the ratios are something like 10 1 4 so there's a lot of nitrogen in it uh, there's some potassium in there and there's, there's also the, the phosphorus and the phosphorus is around about I think I think that's the four so yeah, it's um, and when you look at blood, fish and bone, the, the levels in blood, fish and bone meal are not too dissimilar. They're a little bit higher, but like I say, it's a free commodity, isn't it, really? Your urine, your urine is a free commodity. Now, when you're actually applying it to the soil, you want to dilute it, and you want to dilute it, say, 10 to 1. So if you've got a, a 10 litre watering can like I've got here, you want one litre of urine, um, to the nine liters of water, and that should be fine as an as a straight on application uh, to the soil. I put the raw urine, if you like. I'm quite well hydrated, and you can tell if you're hydrated by the colour of the pea. If you've got a very light coloured pea, sort of light golden colour, then uh, you're, you're well hydrated. If it's more of an orangey colour, then you want to you want to get some liquid inside you because you're dehydrated long-term dehydration is no good for your kidneys and your liver your digestive system you want to be drinking about eight uh, glasses of water a day as a rule of thumb but it's not just the NPK it's also the other trace elements that um, because you're eating things and it's a varied diet hopefully that you're uh, that you're eating those micronutrients as well as the macronutrients are going to be going into your pea and therefore that will be going then into the soil and it'll be picked up by the roots of the plant and it'll give them uh, the boost that they need especially for leafy greens leafy green vegetables love it absolutely love it um, such as your, your brassica family of plants all of these that we've got at the side of us here they're all going to benefit from the urea urea is a condensed dried form 
uh, an extract from urine and um, it's very very high in nitrogen urea but you want the natural gentle process so if you dilute the the urine as I say with the water 10 to 1 mix water it directly onto your plants it's up to you if you want to tell the people that you're giving your vegetables uh, to what you've done but when you think about it nobody sort of bats an eyelid about putting uh, manure in the soil worm castings bat guano it's all poo you know worm casting is a, a product of when the worms eat vegetables or whatever you feed the worms it turns it then into the um, the scat of the worm and that's the pea it's also the uh, the excrement forgive my crudity but that's what it is nobody bats an eyelid about that and as long as you've got a reasonably healthy diet then you're going to have quite a high level of nutrition in your pea and I don't want to labour the point but uh, yeah for thousands and thousands of years man has known that now for the um, fruiting plants like your tomatoes and your cucumbers yeah it's still good for that but you don't just want to be using that because that's the urea and the urine is because it's high in nitrogen yeah you'll get a lot of leaf growth from that but not particularly a lot of um, a lot of fruit growth so you need to add the um, the potash in there which is readily available once again through wood ash untreated wood so um, we're going to be burning some dead wood some dead fall um, from the trees in the woods at the back of where we live and then <coughs> obviously I was wanting to do that tomorrow as well but um, we're down for rain for the next 10 days but I'll sort something out and then the ash we'll let it we'll let it just burn down to as as, as degraded as we can possibly get it and then the ash from that you'll mix that in so I'll get a I'll get a scoop of the ash um, about a cup full of the ash put that as well into the watering can with the urine dilute that give it a good stir around and that should be the ideal feed really for the cucumbers and the tomatoes that we're going to be growing anyway enough about pee it's peeing down uh, so it's uh, still more indoor jobs I'm gonna plant up the uh, peppers now pot on the peppers and um, yeah get them uh, moved out from the from the small pots that they're in now and put them into larger pots okay see you shortly here are a couple of buckets um that we grew the overwintering brassicas in so we did the purple sprouting broccoli in this in these over winter and obviously i trimmed them all off cut the plants out and all you left with <coughs> excuse me is a little bit of stalk sticking out these are the pots that we want to use for our peppers when we plant the peppers on these are going to be the final um pots for the peppers so um yeah i'm going to tip this out directly into the bed break that up then and just put it in the bed just sprinkle it into the bed there's nothing wrong with it it's full of organic material it's full of the roots so waste not and want not might as well reuse that all we'll need to do is, re is reinvigorate the soil if we're going to be growing in it uh, but this is going to be the bed in the same way that this is for the, but that's going to be for the cucumbers on this side so I'm just going to fill that bed up with that and bulk them out and then we'll get the peppers into the buckets okay so that's raised the level of the bed up by about five inches five or six inches in that area and it, it saved me a bag of compost hasn't it all that you've got left really are these small root balls which are the tight root balls that are at the top all the roots that you can see in there the organic material is the roots that have spread the way throughout the bucket um but yeah that's all you're left with and these don't go to waste because these be these are going to go into the compost bin 
Okay. So these are the smaller buckets than the standard Asda ones. They're about nine inches, if that, in depth. In fact, I'll measure them in a second and we'll know for sure. But I've sort of uh, just over half filled it now with your uh, multi-purpose compost, which is a standard kind of barren uh, compost mix. No real nutrition in that. So we're going to use our tomato mix. Tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, that mix will do for the lot of them. And I'll put a link to, uh, to the actual mix in the description below. Or I might even put the episode in as a... Uh, as a clicker at the end but uh, yeah so I'm just going to put a small scoop probably about half the level you see there's not a lot maybe a little touch more yeah don't know what that would be probably about a hundred grams maybe and that goes into the and then we're going to swiss it around and give it a good thorough mix so it goes all the way down and what we're, what we're doing here is we're not putting the uh, fertiliser and the feed all the way in the bucket because what I want is those little plants, the little pepper plants to seek out that nutrition which will be below below them and so that the roots will go down and seek out that nutrition we're going to also be watering from the bottom because these are going to go into the watering trays and uh, so the moisture is going to be down there the roots will go down try and find the nutrition try and find the moisture and uh, and fill that bucket up which is what we want we want a good root system on these little baby plants as they mature into adolescence so that's only in the sort of bottom just over the bottom half really up to about the the plant's going to sit on top of that and then the roots should come out from that and seek out the nutrition okay so that's what we're going to do now later on down the line we're going to be feeding with the uh, comfrey liquid feed so it's it's going to get its nutrition but i want those roots to be established first before we start to feed them you can overfeed baby plants and you don't want to be doing that really you want good strong hardy plants and that's uh, that's from the root system that you get that boys and girls okay so i've topped off the final sort of four inches or whatever with the barren mix of compost and i've scooped out some of the soil or the growing me the growing medium from inside the center and saved it in there so I've got some space there for the pot to go in the plant so what I do is we make an impression with the pot into the soil you've seen me do this before if you're a long-term viewer obviously but if I put that into there then I'm going to be uh, earthing up around it with that but what I'm doing at this at this stage is just getting the uh, getting the plant to fully fill the hole, if you like, as I put it in. When I take the little chili out of there, I'll tease some of the side roots so that they know where they can go in that direction, you know, and seek out the nutrition and the moisture. But I am going to be topping it off with more compost. But you can see there, once that is removed, it's made a moulding, kind of. If you don't fill it up with soil again <laughs> made a kind of moulding inside there um, to the more or less exact shape of what the root ball is going to be from the chilli plant ok now unfortunately with chilli plants they're not quite like tomato plants and tomato plants have got hers all the way up the stems so you can trim off the lower leaves and the hers if you bury them uh, further into the ground the hers that are on the lower stems turn into uh, roots in fact all along the tomato plant they will turn into roots but chili pla chili plants are not like that so you can't bury them below the lower leaves unfortunately you can take the lower leaves off and we probably will be doing that later as they get too big they're just going to go uh, yellow and uh, 
and manky so I'll probably take those off as the plant gets a bit more established and puts more foliage out but as it stands at the moment that's fine we're going to get those into the watering trays and then a bit later on I'm going to give it the uh, the first and only watering from above so it's going to be sat in water it'll be watered from above so that we get the moisturization all the way through the bucket and that but that's only an initial an initial thing um as it goes through its life cycle that'll just be getting watered from the bottom and then once a week or so i will be using a small um watering can which i've got over there and i'll show you in a second to just gently feed from above and let the the liquid feed go down so through capillary action it will suck up moisture from below see we're gently I'm, I'm, I'm gently doing that as though I'm actually making the water rise uh, but that'll suck up the water from below and then once a week as I say we'll be doing it um, from the top but you don't want to be splashing the leaves you see you've got to gently water it from the top and uh, that's the best way of looking after the plant there they are all potted up now I'm going to gently water those in to try and work from around the sides because it tends to bank up around the sides and so it all sort of the soil from the sides trickles towards the center if you like with a, gen a gentle watering in hard to do one handed as usual guys but uh, I'm sure what I can manage. Don't want the stems rotting off, you see. If they're sat in water, it's not good. It's not too good, that. Well, this is obviously that's a small, long nosed watering can, isn't it? You can pick them up from the garden centres, a couple of quid. I've had that for three years, that. Well, four years, actually, now. Uh, it's going to need three more fillings. So I'll do that. Water them in. The jobs are good. Back again. Uh, I've got some brassicas. I've got plenty of brassicas that I need to pot on. But first, I need to make some space. I'll show you the brassicas I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be potting on. So I need six of those potted on. And that's red cabbage. Six of the pack choy. Twelve of these Monsanto Calabrese. And twelve of the Clapton <coughs> cauliflower. <coughs> excuse me. And six of those um, Kiloton F1 cabbages. Okay, so that's 46 brassicas that we need to uh, introduce to bigger pots. I've got to make space for that as well because I'm going to keep them inside the polytunnels for another couple of weeks at least until I've got space for them outside. Because um, they're going to have to be grown, as many of you know, underneath netting because of our pigeon issue and also because of the uh, cabbage white butterfly issue um, that many a grower has in England we certainly got it so I'm going to keep them in here for another couple of weeks until those onion beds are free and then they're going to be planted up into there but yeah I've got uh, 42 did I say uh, 42 to pot on and I need some space okay so I'm going to get some stuff out because we've got a break in the weather I don't know how long it's going to last but it's certainly brightened up I'm hoping I'm going to get an hour or so without too much uh, persistent rain and they're going to be uh, sorted so I'm going to make some space yeah I'm going to get these courgettes out first I'm going to show you where I'm going to put them I'm going to go in this bed now this is a fairly sheltered spot and it gets a lot of sun so I think that'll be okay for the uh, for the courgettes we've grown them in the before and they did fine I've got to clear all this detritus out of the way though all these um, trellises I'm also going to attempt to remove as much of that bindweed that you can see there popping through as I possibly can I suspect it will be a vain attempt but I will I will try and get shi get shifted 
uh, as much as I possibly can of that bindweed. You can see it's all the way through. It's a pain in the ass. Excuse me, French, but uh, I hate bindweed. Horses' tails are not as are not too bad, but the bindweed is uh, it's a bugger. It wraps itself around the plants and strangles them, and it's just a pain. But I'm going to try and get rid of as much of that as I possibly can. Okay, so I've took most of the well, all of the visible visible bindweed out as I possibly could, but. It depresses me. It doesn't really clinically depress me, but it really cheeses me off. I nearly swore them boys and girls. Because uh, I'll come back next week and it'll be a lovely crop. It, it, it'll look like uh, I've got a full bed of a, uh, the most fantastic bed of asparagus you've ever seen, but it'll all be bindweed. So I'll just have to constantly keep on top of that and just pull the heads off, behead them every time, and hopefully try and weaken them. There's one that's missed the, prog missed the pogrom over there, look. Coming up down the sides. But yeah, it's a constant battle with the bindweed. And it's a war of attrition that you'll never win. You can go under the soil, you can trace the, 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 the root rhizomes. Dig it all out. And then the tiniest fragment that you've missed will suddenly become a massive bindweed. It's a pain. And because we don't use any sort of harsh... Um, herbicides down here then uh, it's, a, it's a losing battle really the only way you could do it is if you actually completely saturated your soil with the most poisonous crap you could think about but then you'd kill everything wouldn't you so we can't do that you've just got to keep on top of it keep plucking off the heads as they pop up and that's what I'll do but you have to do it all over because as I say inside here you've got them uh, sprouting through they're all over the plots. Once you get the bindweed, that's it. It's the gift that it's the gift that keeps on giving, but it's a crap gift, one you never want. But yeah, it keeps coming back. Those are in there anyway now. So we've got the yellow cars yet there, and we've got the green one there. That's going to be left in there. I'm going to be planting around the sides as well. I'll probably get the um, beet roots in here, just to you know, carpet it with beet root. And then hope that the bindweed does the bindweed doesn't strangle it to death. Anyway, they're in. Another job done. <laughs> Equestum arvensi. Horse's tail. An invasive plant that often crowds out weaker plants. And if there was a prize for growing it, I'd win every year. I think. This is in Tiki Tunnel 2, in, in Tiki Tunnel 1, rather. And you can see, I've lined these beds. I give them a triple layer of the weed membrane underneath those beds. And it rolls up to about uh, four inches away from the top of the, the bed. It just comes around the sides, doesn't it? You know, pain in the ass. Um, I don't seem to be plagued with the bindweed in here. I think we've got hedge bindweed. That's what we've got out. It's either field bindweed or hedge bindweed. But, uh, hedge bindweed. but we have certainly got the horse's tail. And that'll grow underground. The rhizomes spread underground. It'll grow. You can put it a, a, a foot of concrete. It'll still grow through it. Out on the lane there. I'll show you later on. But on the lane, it's growing through the tarmac. It's uh, a, another hardy perennial Anyway, enough of my gardening gripes. Let's get some uh, brassicas potted on. So that's our compost. All I've done is I've rubbed it between my fingers. I haven't sieved it. It's going to have um, the blood, fish and bone added. There's five big scoops, big double handful scoops there that's gone into the... And into that, I'm going to put one of these... Um, a scoop of that, basically. So that'll come up to about 200 uh, grams of blood, fish and bone. Mix it well in, and that's going to be our potting mix, our potting on mix. Now, as you can see there, you can it's interspersed with little bits of blood, fish and bone. Um, I've filled up the 12 pots, 3 inch pots. I'm going to transfer then my selection out of the uh, plants that we've got there. How many, how many have we got? We've got 12 a couple of cells empty in that one You've got 22 i'm going to select the best 12 out of there you're looking for the straight stem 
standing tall and proud like little guardsmen. That's what you want. The wonky ones that are going over to one side, I'm not going to favour. And I'm going to be burying them up to the end of where this is. You see the, the colour on that, that the colour of that is a sort of purple colour and then it becomes green. You can bury them up to there. They're like a nice firm purchase. So when I've filled these pots up, I've put um, I've packed it in quite tightly into there. When it goes out into the big wide world, it's going to be uh, firmed up even more. But I'm just going to transfer them from the small cells, the sort of one and a half inch cells, into the three inch cells. And then we'll let them continue on. So all I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting a, a small hole. to uh, the depth and width that I believe the cell is going to be like that taking it out of there and popping it into there what should, which one should we go for first boys and girls I think that one there do you get the little uh, basal leaves off it excellent camera work again I'm just going to be careful because I'm going to squeeze that one out. I don't want to sort of disrupt the the soil ball. I'm going to squeeze that out and then pop it into the... Okay. So that's about an inch below the surface. And all we do now is we just cover that round. You can see the state of the root balls. Decent root mass on it. So that's okay. Should be fine. We'll put it into there and then I'll top it off that then with... A little more. They're like a nice seat, a nice firm purchase. And if you favour them when they're already standing up straight, that's better. Because when you plant them out, you want the stems to be as strong and straight as you can get them, really. A good, strong shaft. There you go, Gordon. Good, strong shaft there. Graham, rather. Um and that's fine that's potted on that's going to be okay hopefully then like i say you, you you do tease these out a little bit the roots so they get so that they get the idea that they need to spread the wings and then that should infest the rest of the pot and uh, bob's your uncle hopefully that's going to hold them for the next two or three weeks until i can get some space outside to plant them in the ground but uh, we'll see how we get on Got my fingers crossed. Boy, it's hot in here now. The sun's come out. Great. Okay. So there they all are, like proud little soldiers. Just going to try and keep them straight if you can. It's not the end of the world if they don't keep straight. It's just better. When they flop over, they tend to... Uh, they don't tend to do as well, you know what I mean? You want, you want to keep the stems as straight as you can. They will eventually when they get top heavy, tip over, but you want a good, you want a good stem, a good shaft. Uh, so there's the Monsanto. Uh, it's actually Monclanto. I misspelt it. It's Monclanto F1 Calabrese. Those are the ones that we're not favouring. So I'm going to leave those up at the top. You'll get Somebody will get a good six plants out of them. And they're free, so what do you want? Move them buddy buckets off the top of them spuds. These spuds have got to get out. If we if it gets like this again tomorrow, we're gonna to be laughing with that. I'm gonna get those into the other um into the other watering tray now. Alright. So I've just put half an inch of water in there. The actual seedlings themselves were wet through. So I think they might be getting overwatered there. So I'll put the um water in as I've done in that tray there and then You'll get some capillary action coming up there and the roots can seek that out. But I don't want to uh, overly water them. So I think we'll leave them. Because it's not going to be very hot over the next few days. But it's going to be nice. It's going to be about like 10 degrees or whatever. So, yeah. Alright, so I made a promise to a certain little boy. To, uh, if the weather improved, take him out for a bike ride. We'll go out for a bike ride together. So me and our James are going to go out for a bit, I think, this afternoon. According to the last check on the weather in Wigan, it should be fine for the next uh, couple of hours. So, uh, yeah, we'll get out on the bikes for a bit. 
If I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window, but I'll see you tomorrow because I'm coming down again. I'm going to be getting the rest of those brassicas out. Or rather not out. Uh, potted on. And then uh, there we go. You've got to plan for these indoor jobs when the weather is inclement like this. But there'll come a stage quite shortly where I'll have to brave the elements and get the rest of them spuds out. And also these. These brassicas planted in. So I'm going to get a soggy bottom, potentially tomorrow. Right, I'll catch you later boys and girls, have a good one. If I don't see you through the week, as I say, I'll see you through the window. Be good to each other and yourselves. And uh, remember, keep growing with your heads down and we love you all. Tassy bye now boys and girls. Bye bye. Yeah, pee pee. Pee pee for the peas on the teepee. Feel free to uh, thumbs up or thumbs down. It's all natural, guys. Good health. Sorry. Catch you in a bit.